Hello everyone, I'm Michael Redmond and I'll be here to um, commentate for this uh, international uh, champion match of Pure Go and uh, fairly soon this, uh, the players will be uh, coming into the playing room I believe. <coughs> and this is going to be a Pure Go match. Uh, uh, Pure Go has come a long way in the few decades that it's been around. Um, it was originally invented by uh, Taki Sao and his wife uh, Taki Hiroko. Um, and here we see some people coming into the room. And it has become a very major part of the Go scene um, as um, Pure Go is a very good way for uh, two players to learn from each other. So it's a, a, a very good way of uh, uh, two players to um, collaborate to make a, a different type of game. Now the announcement is starting the, the game, apparently, and they're go going to invite the players in. And they're now in introducing the peers. Um, there is from Japan, it's uh, Shei Ming um, and Yama Yuta, the Japanese peer. And from China, uh, Kaketsu, I mean Koche, and um, Yu are the uh, Chinese peer. And that was Otake Hideo, who was the referee who led them into the stage.
。あ,あ、もう握りやったんですか。Oh, so they have started already.、Um, and it seems that black is the, the Japanese pair. Very unusual opening for black, a bit flat on the right side. And the 3 3 point in the lower left corner here is、um, it's become a popular move since AI has started playing it again. It used to be a fairly popular.、Um, A few, several decades ago, when players like Sakata Eyo、uh, liked to play it.、Um, but then at, for a while it was out of fad. So it's、uh, come back、um, when we're seeing some AIs putting such a、um, uh, strong value for the 3 3 point in some cases. So people are starting to play the 3 2 points again. And with a low stone here, I would expect black to play high in the upper right. In the playing room, they're still taking a lot of pictures, so we don't really have a side view of the board. The knight's move. And so black will be making maybe territory on the right side. Usually you see the jump, which is, would be too low in this case, with two black stones、uh, low on the,、uh, this low stone here also would make the whole. Right side low. So this would be more normal. But this is also, even though the white has the solid connection, this is also a way that black can play because for the time being, it's not a big problem for black. As white will be very cramped、um, on the side here. So this is,、uh, although white might manage to live with this kind of exchange. It will still be very cramped for white. So, even if white manages to live, it's, usually it's not going to be very good because black will be able to live in the corner too. So, black plays the knight's move and white extended to the side. So, black plays here. So, the left side position, it's a point where、um, many players, I think, would play the large knight's move. Um, to make a relatively simple、um, continuation. And then black could maybe play high here or play the two space extension.、Um, so this would be relatively simple.、Um, and if white plays a pincer, then black can jump here. I mean,、um, and this would lead to a fairly well,、um, well known variation of that joseki. So it would be not so hard to handle. When black plays high and white plays underneath here, Now, there's a number of variations that can possibly happen. For instance, locally, black can push or can cover here, and the push, push could lead to the avalanche joseki. So, this would be a lot of complications. This would be a very difficult joseki locally, but、uh, would probably tend to、uh, be good for white at this time with the extra white stone on this side. So, it would be、um, a very dangerous choice for black to be making. And in the actual game, black played away. But if black plays covering here, then white can push. 
And if we just look at the upper side, white will play something like this and black will extend, which would not be bad for black. But white can also play a pincer to make a more um, aggressive stance here in the upper left. So that's some things that could happen in the immediate area. Uh, but instead, black started by playing the, the um, star point here. And this Joseki. So at this point, white had a, uh, black had a choice of jumping here, in which case white would uh, slide once more maybe, and something like this, which would uh, start to control the center of the board, um, but would be um, weak underneath on the sides. So instead, black chose this way, which might allow white to play something like this. Um, it's not necessarily the best move, but this would be, locally, this is a move that you would see in many cases, and then black would be able to play something towards the side. So black would be building on the lower side. So in the game, white plays this splitting move. And um, as they say, when you play into your opponent's side like this, you do want to have room to extend on one side or the other. So um, if black plays here, white still has enough room to make a, an extension here. And if black plays on this side, white does have, white, black did play there, white does have enough room to play this kind of move which is what would uh, automatically happen um, a few years ago. But uh, of course, um, AIs have a way of dealing with this uh, in corner enclosure, which is a bit unusual. And so you're often seeing some human players uh, mimicking that by playing moves like this or like this against the Sumari. But why play the normal move? So um, this has calmed down a little bit. We have a, a small... Um, potential black territory here, some, uh, base, well, this group has a base, and black has a corner which is not territory yet, but it's a strong position for the time being, and so white has territory on this side. So the board is sort of being split up into small areas that are not in immediate danger at this point. Um, at this point, if we're going to talk about territory, then for instance something like this on the right side would continue to surround the, the right side, or something like um, if we're talking about attacking, for instance, something like this would be one way that black could play to try to attack white on the lower side. And this would have the extra value of um, probably causing the corner, for instance, if we have something like this, if we expect this kind of thing. This would uh, use the attack to build on this corner and get rid of some of the weaknesses that black has in the corner. For instance, Um, there are moves, um, a lot of um, possible ways that white can attack the corner, like there's this attachment to the through three point, uh, which sometimes works to reduce the corner. And there's this move, which can also work to reduce the corner. So there's actually a number of moves that white can use against this um, Sumari, because it, is, it does have a lot of room inside, which allows white to do various things. So black played the extension on the right side. So black didn't do that. This is, is the largest area as far as territory is concerned, um, partly because black doesn't really have um, such a great local move there on in the upper left. This is a much more territorial safe move. It's a, it's a more solid move. And now white plays here. And so this changes the balance of power slightly in the lower side, because in some cases white will be threatening to jump in here and make some trouble for black on the lower side. So, this black group has gotten slightly weaker now. And so a defensive move there would be to play something like that, which would be uh, getting ready to attack white with something like this next, to flatten white's shape. But black was more active, and black played this move. So this is getting close to the variation that I was showing earlier, in which case black is planning to do something like this, which will, it will strengthen the corner, and um, it will build on the right side. So this is going to work well for black in that area. And black still has uh, this attacking move and this kind of forcing move that can be used to um, reinforce black on the lower side. So for the time being, uh, the um, White still has to worry about moves like this and can probably not make an all-out attack on black on the lower side. 
So black, for the time being, is taking profit on this side. And so white didn't do that. Instead of um, connecting underneath, white played this way. So white is trying to play a move compared to this move, pushing here, it does have more impact on black on the left. So black plays the same way here. And um, if white does stuff like this, then um, this is a position where it would be normal to be playing the second move here. So um, white actually leaves it here and immediately jumps to the left. So we can see that this combination of two moves, when white pushes and then jumps in here, is an, uh, an attempt to change the um, area of the fight and to put more pressure on black before white plays something very f submissive on the right side. So black locally has a choice between um, the two natural moves would be either an attachment on top like this, after which white would be able to connect up towards the side, um, and this kind of thing might, might happen. Or black can try a, an attachment underneath, which would be a bit more, there would be more variations to this one. And it could be more, um, it, it's certainly more volatile, it's more, volatile, it's more hard, harder to see what's going to happen. Um, but instead black plays the higher one. And so white will probably, white has this move. White also has this move, which is also a testity here. Um, but I'm sort of expecting this one in this case, just because these stones are the white stones that are not settled. It seems more reasonable to be connecting up to these stones to make a base for this white group. Yes. So this is what happened. Okay, and black covered, and white came underneath, and now it's black's turn. So um, at this point, this white group has become fairly strong, and so if we assume black plays here, white will probably pull back in this case. Um, in this case, white would be able to later connect up to this side also with this move, so it would be very good shape for white. So instead, black plays the double honey. Uh, now, when black plays the double hane here, you have to think of two moves for white. You have to think of the cut here and the cut here. And this one is working okay for black, because black connects, and white needs to protect on this side. Capturing the one stone would allow black to capture these two white stones, which in this case would not be good enough for white. It would be too easy for black to make a life. So white would probably play here to capture that stone. And we can see that there's more potential for black to be um, for instance, c connecting up on the uh, upper side. Using the Aji created by this stone, it, for instance, if white plays here, black can cut, and we can see that white's going to be getting into trouble underneath. So this means that black will have more um, options to connect up on top. So that's the idea behind the Hane. So um, just to go into the, what happens if white cuts on top, black will connect. And um, this looks a bit dangerous for, uh, for white because black can curl around here. Um, and if white covers, then black can capture the one stone. And black already has the option to live. Uh, there is a ko on the left and there is this cut here. So white has a lot of trouble on all sides, to, to say, put, put it simply. So this is just uh, maybe an overplay by white. So white, uh, white, black played the hane, white cut, and white connected here. So white connected solidly, um, and black did play the hane here. So again, we can see that um, if white does play here, white will then have to uh, play some move on this side once. So black will have the, um, will have sente, will have the tempo to move, play a move 
um, in, this, in, the, in the center of the board. So the alternative for white would be to play around here. And this could lead to a, ah, white did play the honey. So black is probably going to cut and white plays here. And so white is, uh, later white is planning to extend here. But for the time being, the lower side is uh, maybe more important. For instance, if black is going to connect here, then white would continue um, with the connection here. Unfortunately for black, black cannot play the wedge. The wedge would be a nicer move to play if white would answer underneath, um, in which case white would be uh, pushed down to the second line and black would have to cut here later. But uh, obviously this is not going to work because it's a double Atari here, so that would not be good for black. So black has not played the cut yet. Um, the alternative between this move, which allows white to curl around here, would be to, to cover here once. So this might be what black is considering. Um, if black covers here once, white has to take the one stone, and then black could cut. Um, this would give white more freedom, for instance, to play in the center, but uh, playing this Atari with center would be a very valuable move. So black would be gaining a lot on this side, provided black um, could save these stones here. We can see that the white group is already alive, even if we ignore the weaknesses that black has here, white's already alive. And there is a cut here, so black is going to be very busy on the outside. So instead, black played a fairly conservative move, black just extended. So this is interesting because it, um, it leaves the option to playing this kind of move, as well as the option of cutting here and threatening to capture in a ladder-like shape. So it's, um, it's going either way. Black doesn't, hasn't really committed himself yet. Um, and black is building on the right side here. So black's idea to make a big moyo here is still working. And white plays a peep. And black leaves it. So this is going to be some kind of a trade. So black cuts here. Um, for the time being, these three stones are very big. So I would expect white to either play here or here to save the three stones. So white played here. And then maybe black will be going back to this point. So after this, I would say that um, there is this, con this attachment here to capture, well, to cut off this one white stone. Uh, but it's, it's not going to kill the white group on the side, so it's not a, um, all that important. Uh, white continued the fight in the center by pushing here. And of course from white there's this move, which will save the one stone. And quite often it will be sente, because black will usually, locally black will answer it here. But um, none of this is very important when we think that the, of the center fight, which is becoming very heated up now. Um, both players have to continue in the center here. It's um, very important. Uh, and if we look at the overall position, Black's moyo here on the right side of the board is very big. And so just if we just look at White's territory, um, all of White's territories are not all that um, impressive. So they're not so big. And White's plan, White's game plan here is to attack Black in this area, this Black group in the lower, in the lower left area. And um, while doing that attack, for instance, if black jumps out and white uh, curls around, uh, black actually played this move, and white curls around, um, and black will be doing something like this, for instance. And as black deals with this group on the left, we can see that white will get to be starting things on the other side, too. Um, and actually, black will fight this. Um, and so it's going to be turning into a big fight. But um, we can see that there's potential that black is going to be busy in the center and also busy in um, saving that group on the left. Uh, th white does have some potential to turn the center fight around while attacking black on the left and, and by doing so reduce black's moyo on the right. So that would be white's game plan. Um, something that looks a bit more safe would, per, for instance, be to play here. Wouldn't be quite as powerful, but something like this would be another similar thing. 
Um, it would be more simple here, which means that um, when black does something like this or li this, white has to have a very um, strong attack against black on the left. So that sort of depends on what happens on the left, because this side would be a very a big territory, um, be turning into a territory at this point. So most of this side would be expected to be a black territory, and white would need to have a very effective attack on the left. So at this point, white is pulled back. And I chose this move um, for the diagram. Of course, um, this is a point where it's uh, very hard to say what the best move is. Uh, because this is a kind of a compromise, making sure of black's connection in this area, but uh, black's shape on the outside. As I was showing um, in this variation here, uh, when black white does play something from the outside, it's not the best um, shape for black. It's not a, a shape that it is easy for black to turn into a living an eye shape. Uh, so usually you want to do shapes like this actually, but this is a bit weak in the connection on the left here, so that's sort of avoiding that. So black started with uh, the connection here. Um, as I was sort of trying to indicate, the cut here, uh, if white plays the cut here, this would lead to a lot of complications in the center and it would make it more difficult for black to deal with both sides. So it would be nice indeed if black can play this connection and for instance force white to play here. This is a, a very important shape move so it is feasible that white would play here and then black could play on the left. Um, after playing this exchange and making things fairly safe for black on the right. So that's the idea behind this, quest this uh, connection and the question is um, can white do something on the left, for instance like this or like this would be an, a strong attack on the left. And when white does that, white has to be aware of this, this threat here, which for the time being is going to be okay because white can just pull back here and this is going to be connected up. And so in this case, black's, black's group here would die and that's probably too big. Um, but then we have to think of moves like this, for instance, which are a bit more complicated. Um, this still looks like white could play here and then play here to connect up in the center. So it looks like this is one way white could do it. Um, and then we would have to think about moves like this, which might be more direct. Um, and then something like that. So there's a lot of um, ways that black can try to um, punish white when white tries to capture the black group on the lower side. In the actual game, uh, white played a very... Uh, unusual move, you might say. The peep here is um, peeping at a point where white uh, usually wants to cut. But um, because of the reasons that I was showing, because the, of the Atari here maybe, and actually um, the pushing here is also an option. The fact that black can pay, uh, play forcing moves from the left um, makes it dangerous for white in the center. So um, although white would usually want to cut there, and it's very unusual, unusual to play this peep. The idea behind this peep is to, if black connects, then white can play here next. And without it, black will be um, breaking through here at some point. Um, I, I suppose this looks reasonable, or black could even push. Um, but in either case, black is going to try to break through here somehow and be looking at this move next. So this is uh, something that I, I think might, might be a bit worried about, uh, might, might have reason to be worried about. So white peeps once, and then is going to push through here. And so if black does something like this, then white will just push through here. So uh, this is uh, an, a, an attempt for white to capture that black group. In the actual game, so this is getting very um, exciting here with this another peep by black. Now the meaning of this is, for instance, if white plays on the outside, which is a normal looking move, it connects up these stones. So it would be, it's maybe the first move that sh should come to mind. Black will then be able to connect here. And when white pushes through here now, black can just connect up here. So this would be a very um, worthwhile exchange, this stone and this stone. Obviously, um, if black does it later, then white will just connect here. 
and black has a very um, limited amount of area to push through with. Whereas without this exchange, if black plays here, this is the game position, there's a bit more space for black to, to work with. Like black still has the potential to, co to connect here. So if black uh, pushes out here, and um, next this would capture white in the center. So if white plays something in the center, then black can start to squeeze white a little bit. Like with this, uh, white would not be able to play a honey. This would just allow black to capture white. So white would be backing down a little bit. And black, this looks like black would be able to eventually connect up in the center, because white's not so strong either. So that's the idea behind this move. So it's a very tricky uh, position here. So white connected. So I'm expecting black to push through here. Otherwise, black might connect here first, just to make um, a more... Per, um, Uh, more of a, um, a lack of liberties for white. Um, this would just sort of, um, but actually this exchange, when this happens, it's not, it's probably better not to have it. So I would, my first idea would be to push out here. And if white pushes through to cut, uh, then we would have this kind of shape. And it would be a very big, exciting fight. So at this point, there's, it's already a very, very complicated position where the players have to be doing a lot of reading. Um, but to me, it looks a bit dangerous for white because black still does have a, a number of forcing moves in the center, like this, this kind of move would be forcing, threatening to capture white in the center. And black does have a, a certain number of um, forcing moves, I mean, black does have a good number of open liberties here. So four liberties here and there's one inside liberty. So it's, um, going to be fairly difficult for white to win the semi-eye. And also, if black does extend here, black will have a, a large number of liberties. So, um, so this kind of fight, it, I get the feeling it looks dangerous for white, but it is a very, um, it's going to be a very close fight. Let's see, where was I? So we're at the point that black has peeped and white has connected. And so, um, I, the, the move I was uh, showing up to now is this one. Uh, there's also this move, which is making a connection here for the time being. Uh, this would, um, in this case, white would uh, play here. And black can cut white with this. And after this, um, these two points are still interchangeable points. Like if black connects here, white can cut here. And when black has moved out this way, there's still this open liberty here, which makes it easy for white to, for instance, if black plays here, it's easy for white to escape in that direction. And so it's not really working. Like if black plays here, white can push through here. And again, uh, white having this extra liberty, white's a very strong position there to, to move out, and black's cut off. So. Uh, so that's why I'm suggesting this move, which fills more loops. But actually, black played on this side first. So, um, oh, so that was unexpected. And white ex extended, and black connected. So white is still connected in the center here, more or less. Uh, black, if black plays here, white will be uh, more or less connected with this this stone. And if black pushes out, um, there is some aji here of the hane here. So that might be something that black is aiming at. If we're looking at the left, there's this group has connected out this far, uh, but black would really have been happier moving out in between these two white groups because uh, black is a bit cramped here. And so, as I was saying, black is looking at this possibility and is going to be using it. And this is already turning into a fight to the death. Um, black is going to cut here. And let's see. Um, and white would usually be doing something for this move, this stone. So let's, uh, for instance, let's say if white plays here, then black would continue with this. And this looks like it would be a bit dangerous for white uh, because black would then um, play the honey here. 
and white um, maybe pushes through. Black extends. White plays here. Black plays here. And white plays here. And then it's a question of what happens in the center. But if black has a forcing move here, uh, threatening to extend, so white has to play something there. And then here, we can see that the white stones in the center are captured. So white has to consider that at this point, with this move here. Uh, so what happens if white plays here, for instance? But white took in the, in the ladder. So this is going to be a ladder. And black can escape on the left. So it looks like black is going to be able to make a life here and white connected. So this would be the safe move, which would give white a much safer shape on the outside. Like um, now black, there's no way for black to cut. For instance, if black plays this way, white can push through here. And if black pushes through, then white can connect this way. So these stones would be 100% connected. And if black pushes out this way, which I was showing before, now with the white stone here, white can play diagonally here to connect up. So white would be completely connected up in the center, but would be giving some extra room for black to make a life on the left side. So instead, white connects. So this is the stronger attack. And black pushed through once. I don't really understand the mean. It, it seems to be a bad exchange, actually. Um, but maybe black was just um, playing a kind of a pass move. Um, black, is, you could say that black is, um, looks like black is aiming to play this point, which is um, a kind of a key point. If black continues towards the side, then white has the option to cut here, which would be troublesome for, for black. So I have the feeling that black is thinking of playing here. And the question is, after that, what happens in the corner when white plays down here? And black can play once here, and that seems to attack white. But the corner shape is, is not going to die. For instance, if black peeps here, um, and then plays here, white can live in the corner with this, this move. And if black just simply goes down, Without the peep, then white can live with this move. So white's alive in the corner, um, even if black does play that move there. So um, all of a sudden, this is, uh, well, from the start here, when white moved out in the center, this was a kind of a battle for life and death. And it's, it's getting more and more serious as time goes on. Uh, because at this point, it's looking very complicated but difficult for black to make a life. Black would like to be able to hunt it here after which white might just cut. And um, black can cut here. Maybe white just extends. And black would like to be able to combine that with something in the center. So that's the kind of fight that we might see developing here. Like if what black expand, extends here, white will play here. Um, unfortunately for black, the latter is not working. And these two white stones on the left here are not that important. Like um, they don't uh, capturing those two stones will not change the fact that um, these stones cannot connect up, and so it's going to be a battle with black moving out with these stones. In this case, black would play something like this, white would play something like this, and black would start moving out with these stones somehow, and uh, white would have white would also have a lot to worry about actually because these stones. At the, for the time being, they're losing the semi against black. So um, it is, black still does a have a chance to counterattack. But in the game, it didn't turn out this way. At this point, um, so I was showing a variation where black played a hane and tried to counterattack in the center. But when black jumps here and white goes down here, Black played the hane, white covered, and as, as I was saying, white is alive in the corner. Um, so the question is, what is black going to do apart from that? Black played the hanging connection, the kagetsugi, um, 
and we have to look both at the left and the right sides. Uh, for instance, on the left here, black is threatening to play here. And this would kill white in the corner, so this would be a good result for black. If white plays on this side, uh, what, what about this white group? This white group is not 100% alive either, um, but it, it looks like it's going to be difficult for black to kill it. Like when black plays here, for instance, white can just uh, take the one stone and um, in order to make a co black will have to play something like this. So this looks like it's a bit um, far-fetched for black because the co is a, it's a bad shape to start with, but it is a co. Otherwise, if black plays here and white pushes through here and black pushes through here, uh, now this would be alive because white would be able to just take the one stone. So this would be alive. If black uh, plays here and then pulls back here, um, this would be a very um, a tricky variation. White might start with this move. And we can see white's breaking out here. So this is not really working so well for black. So the best variation I can see at this point for black would be to play this attachment here, and if white takes to play the kosumi, to make a, a ko to throw in after white plays here, black can throw in to make a ko. Um, but instead of this move, which is the submissive move, white plays an Atari, and black played here, and white pushed through. So again, we're seeing some trouble maybe happening in the center. We'll see what how that turns out. Um, but since white did get to play the Sagari here, it's probably going to be a bit difficult for black to kill white outright. Of course, the latter here, for the time being, is good for white. So that's, that's good news for white. That's an important bit of information there. And black plays the Ko. So when white uh, plays the Tari here, it's more, more likely that black is going to play this Ko. Uh, because white's not really 100% alive in the corner if white just connects. White took the Ko, of course. But when white connects, and we have this kind of uh, situation. This wasn't really necessary, but it shows that this is not a live shape. So this would be a semi with a co-attached uh, with the black group on the outside and white inside. So that's uh, the idea of what black is doing here. And white took the co. And black will probably want to continue with something on the outside. And the question is, does black uh, do something like this, which would um, allow white to connect here? Um, as I was saying before, this is a connection for white. white. White can push through here once and then connect here. But of course, it does allow black to escape with the latter. And hopefully black will be, um, in some cases, black will have another cut here. So it's so a very desperate fight for black. But black, it's not as if black doesn't have any, anything to look forward to at all. So this would be one way, looking at the, this move immediately. But it might be better actually to play bump against, oh, black choose, chose this one. So this is how black played. And so I, I showed white connecting up here. So this is one way for white to play. Um, otherwise, if, wha if white finishes this stone off, black will be able to push against white here. And if white cuts this way, black will curl around. And this is actually um, a collapse for white, because uh, white cannot get out of the net. So white's going to be dead now. So black um, played here, and white pushed through here. So that uh, connected up white here, and black took the call and white connected. And so as I said, um, if black plays here and white connects, black will have, um, uh, does have the attachment here to kill white locally, but there still will be a co here. So it's just that the co here um, is going to last a long time comparatively. 
Whereas, um, and so that's the meaning of White's connection here. Because otherwise, if White had played a co-threat, this would be much more damaging to White in the corner. So White answers once here, and Black plays here. And actually, White played away. White, um, as I was saying before, there's also a co here when Black plays here and here. So White um, actually played a move on the outside to get rid of that potential. So White had to play a move here. Um, and that makes this a completely living shape. Black is still not uh, completely alive on the side here. Uh, for instance, if black just takes two stones, if we ignore the corner, which is not completely alive, white can uh, play something like this to reduce black to just one eye. Um, so black cannot locally live. But um, if we look at the white group, of course, there's this honey here, which kills white. And so this ko on, on the side here would start again. So that's a position where black has a potential ko to kill white or to li or if white plays a move inside, like if white plays something like this, then white would live. But then of course black would be able to live too on the side. So this would be a more peaceful ending. So black does have that um, potential there to make a ko at least. But first black played uh, out into the center. And white um, played an Atari here. So this Atari has the effect of um, removing the threat of a cut here. Because um, there was a cut, a threat of a cut here. With the white stone here, it's going to be a ladder. So um, if black plays here, now white can capture in a ladder. So then white pushes here. So there's this new fight starting in the center of the board. And if black uh, plays here, white can push through here to connect. So although all of White's liberties are filled, when Black actually goes to fill them like this, we can see that it's filling Black's own liberties. So it's something that Black cannot really do very um, easily. It's usually a bad idea. So Black is not playing that exchange. But um, if, if this Black group on the outside becomes relatively strong, then we know that Black can fill most of the liberties here. So Black jumps out. And again, this is threatening to cut here. This is going to be a ladder blocking move. And if black cuts here, this is trouble for white on both the left and in the center. So that's why white answered that. And the, move is the game is still moving quickly. Black played the jump. And so black is chasing this white group. And um, for a long time from now on, this black group that is not completely alive yet is going to have more liberties than white does in the center. So white has to run out for a while um, to get some, some length to this group, some outside liberties, before white can be thinking of, uh, for instance, playing moves like this or like this to try to kill the black group. White needs to get some extra liberties here. And also, um, as I was saying, although if white plays, um, white doesn't even have a way to capture the stone. Like if white plays here, black can still save this stone with this move. And so there's no way that uh, white can capture this black stone. And so already this is uh, no eyes for white. So white doesn't have any eye space. And for the time being, if black, for instance, if white plays here, uh, for instance, black can play something like this. And this is something like uh, three or four liberties on the outside. So it would definitely not be enough for white. Black has more, just black has, well, maybe an inside liberty, but also so many liberties in this area that it's just pointless for white to even think of it. So white plays another jump. So once white has jumped this far, and black it continues to jump, um, we're getting close to the point where white can start thinking of trying to attack black um, on the side. Of course, even if black plays here, it could well turn into this co with the corner white group. So even if black plays first, it's not completely alive. And white plays here. And this defensive move that white played earlier in the game here, um, while it was defending white on the lower side, now it's coming into play to make this black group on the outside weaker. So if white plays something like this next, white's going to be able to capture uh, this black group. So black probably, uh, locally black would um, usually play something like this, or maybe in this case uh, play something like this to have a stronger effect on the center. Oh, but here, yes. This also has a strong effect on the center. 
And um, it's, a, it's defending against the cut here. So white could just play a hunter here. Um, if black answers here, white can play another Atari. So this would be um, a nice exchange for white. White played the hunter first. Mm. And black does have to answer this somehow. Like black could um, play something on the side here, like this or this. And this would be alive for the time being. In this case, white would play an Atari. And would have this, um, white cannot cut yet, because black can just play here to capture it. So white would be able to um, force with a move like this. And all of these moves are extending white's liberties to a small degree. So white, black would end up um, maybe answering something like this. Here or here. Um, and white has extended liberty, so white would be, uh, at this point, thinking of maybe playing some more moves towards the right side, or maybe is it, um, early, is it um, early enough for white to start attacking black, so white would have to choose there. But instead, black cut here, so this is the strongest move, and white played an Atari anyway. And again, white could not cut here. But white does have this forcing move on the outside, so maybe white's going to force with this, and black has to answer that. Yes. And still, white doesn't seem to have enough liberties to, to win the semi. -I. For instance, if white played something on the left side, and black played something like this. Um, I would probably be betting on a on black winning the semi -I here, um, because black does have a way to fill most of those liberties over there, and does still have uh, the option of taking these two stones next. So, um, yeah, and and white's shape here with the jumps. There's going to be some possibilities for black to be reducing the number of uh, liberties, but actually. White played here. So we can see white is still extending the liberties a little bit. And it's starting to make one eye here. But one eye, of course, is not going to be good enough to, to live. Uh, for instance, white could make a life, uh, a living one eye with this move. But it looks like it's going to be difficult for white to make a second eye for this group. <clears throat> so we're heading towards uh, a semi eye on the left side of the board. This is a point where um, it's already a bit too complicated for me to um, say offhand who's going to win the semi -I. But um, this is a point where white could be starting to think of moves like this or moves like this to reduce black's eye space. And it's very difficult to read out what's going to happen. I, I can see a ko here on the lower side. So there's a ko in the lower right, uh, lower left, that is, um, which is um, probably going to come into play. Like, it's going to be impossible to capture these black stones without the ko unless white can take away all of black's eyes. So if black has any eyes with that group, there's um, finally going to be a ko on the lower side. And white pushed through here. Um, Black's probably going to play the Hana here. Um, and locally, immediately, this is not going to work for white, because black can cut here. And of course, this kind of thing would just allow black to play an Atari here, so it wouldn't be very good for white. But white could play once here now. And with this exchange, if black plays this way, then white would be able to play the Hana. This would give white very good shape. So if white jumps here, I would expect black to play either here or here to um, stop white from entering the right side, which would extend white's liberties and start to give white potential to live. And then, of course, there's a question, can white make any eyes? Like, this would be an example of how um, maybe white can make eyes. If black will answer all, or all of these moves, then white would be able to make an eye, uh, two eyes with this. So it's something that could happen 
but in actual practice it might not happen. Like in this case black might play here and if white plays here black can cut. and escape this way. This would probably capture the, these stones. Um, or if white plays ones here, black could still force with this and then play on this side. So it, it's not really um, all that safe for white to try to do that, um, but it is, there is a little bit of potential there. So instead white played this attachment. <coughs> so the idea here is if, if black plays underneath, I would expect white to play a honey on the top. And uh, we can see if black is careless, then this is going to allow white to break through somehow. For instance, like this. Um, this way would be one way white could break through. And this would uh, give black trouble in the lower right corner. Uh, it just has very bad shape here. So I wouldn't be surprised to see something bad happening in the lower right corner next. So to get back to the game, when white attached here, black played a honey on top, and white played here. And so white did get, get to break into the right side. And um, if black goes straight down here, which locally is good shape, then white would get the honey here, and black would extend. White would still not be, um, black might even play this exchange first, just to make sure that white doesn't have an eye there. And white would still not be alive, but white would have a good number of liberties. So this is one way that white could extend uh, their, um, their liberties. So it's still, um, black played, chose to play this way, after which white gets the Atari. And black will connect. And we can still see that white doesn't really have any eyes here. Uh, white still does have a potential eye. Um, for instance, if white plays this move first, white will have an eye here. But of course, one eye is not going to be good enough. And at some point, like if white plays here, black always has the option to play a move like this, which would take away that eye with sente. So at this point, there's the question of what is going to happen, for instance, if white does something like this in the lower right corner. Um, so this is one problem that's sort of troublesome, um, worrying. And also, what hap what's going to happen on the left side if white starts to go after this black group with a move like this or a move like this? Also, white did play that move in the lower right corner. Um, and for instance, if black plays this move, which seems to be a very natural shape move, white can bump against black here. And if black again plays the normal move, then we can see that white is connecting up on the side. So this would be a bit, um, a bit troublesome because Black doesn't really have eyes here, so um, it'd be really interesting, for instance, because this kind of thing could happen, and black still has a cut here to look at, and then stuff like this could happen, and, and we would see that this black group is not alive, and it would turn into a semi between this black group and this white group, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say what I think might happen. It's, it's just very complicated. Uh, it looks like actually with all these um, inside liberties, maybe even black has a chance to win because black has an eye and a lot of inside liberties, but it's going to be pretty close. Instead, when white played here, black covered here. So this is threatening to connect up underneath or at least capture the one stone. It depends on how many liberties black has. For instance, this would be a way that black could try to connect up underneath. And uh, the liberties involved are when black connects underneath, and it might turn into a, a semi-eye between these three stones and these black stones on the outside. So that's one way black can play. Also, locally, black can just take one stone here, and even if white cuts black off, this would be a very easily it would turn into a living shape. For instance, even a move here um, would give two eyes. So um, that's part of the meaning of covering here. Also the fact that white was, it looked like white was trying to connect underneath. And so white counters with this move, cutting black off here, and black crawls. And so it's turning into a fight between these stones of white that are inside blacks, what looks like black's territory, and these stones on the outside. 
And the best white can hope for is a kind of a squeeze maybe, in which case maybe white can get some extra moves here, but I don't really see white getting anything more than that. Um, and I believe we can see the game room um, on, the, on the right of me. And Koche is sort of um, backing off from the game there, so I, I, it doesn't look like he, he's very happy, if you ask me. But it's hard to tell because he, he does use a lot of body language. Um, and of course, his partner, Yu, is, um, she's very uh, uh, focused on the game. So this is really, it's, um, it's looking a bit, locally, it's looking dangerous for white. It's looking difficult, difficult for white. Um, there's still this fight between white's center group, the potential fight between white's center group and um, black's group on the left, which is going to be, oh, but white started a call. So this is um, just adding another factor to the whole, all of the con confusion. If white had connected here, then black would probably need to put another stone in here. Maybe, um, maybe something like this would be the safest move. And so that would finish off these three stones. Um, and white would uh, have some extra liberties here. And so I would still have the question of what happens with this. There's a, still a potential co in that corner too. Um, so by no means is it easy to, to judge, but white does have a lot of distance here with these stones, and it looks like they're connected, more or less. Yeah, these, uh, these one space jumps are a bit worrying sometimes, but it looks like they're pretty close to connected. Like, but black is not perfect on the outside either. So that would still be complicated, but white instead played the ko, and black took, and white played this ko threat. So this is a big co-threat. Like if white plays, if black plays here, the whole right side is going to be black's territory. But these are keystones, and we have to remember that the black group is uh, on the left there is not alive yet. So this would be troublesome for black. So black connected, and white takes back. And black cannot really um, back off from, like this way, would be bad because white would um, probably play something like, I wonder, maybe this one would work too. And it would still be, it would still be a co-like situation. It would not be a safe situation for, for black. So locally, it, it is a co here that they're fighting. So black plays one Atari. And this is uh, still a co. It's whatever happens, like if white finishes this one, black can take here. And it's still going to be some kind of a call, whatever happens. So uh, things are happening all over, basically. It's, um, as this continues, I have the feeling that White's liberties for this group in the center are, um, White might be losing liberties by uh, slightly. So it's, um, that's not good for White. But for the time being, this is a turning into what's almost a direct call, like if Black plays here, um, and white plays here. Uh, locally, uh, it doesn't look like um, black has a way out, so it's going, going to be this co eventually. So black did take the one stone, so I'm expecting maybe this one or something like this to start to attack these black stones, and it will be this co on the right, I believe. Uh, at this point, black is just taken here. Yes, white played here. So if black loses this co, it's going to be very disastrous for black because if black loses these these stones, then it means that these stones will be dead too, and um, in some cases the corner stones too. So like this is going to be depend on how how the corner continues. Like black could play a move like this and it would not die, but um, these these stones would have to connect, live, and then connect. So it would be likely that at least this part of the group, after this group, would die. And so uh, black needs really good co threats. But of course black takes first. So now white pushes through here. And still these co threats um, in the center are still very big. Um, black has a choice of covering from outside or cutting here, which would uh, just lead to more and more excitement in that area.
I'm sort of wanting black to cut here because this would um, reduce white's liberties in the immediate area and it would um, it would give black some like black has a forcing move here um, in regards to white's lack of liberties uh, so black has to start with something like this uh, but in this kind of thing black does have a forcing move here for instance with this kind of exchange where black can squeeze this and then squeeze again from this side and then finally wedge here and so this forcing move also includes all sorts of moves in the general area because in any case black would be able to wedge here of course it depends on the liberties on black on black's outside group so this kind of thing is a weakness that white has and so yes black did cut there so just to get back to the game position it's like this and it was like this and black did cut here so this is really reducing white's um, liberties in this immediate area because even without this stone here black can do that squeeze and it will reduce white's moves in the center by a great deal and so black pushes out white took the co black played this co threat and so now after all of this if we're talking about a semi -I between this white group in the center and black's group on the left side it's already hopeless for white so that's that's sort of um, an option that is gone for the time being these black stones are okay and as I was saying black has um, all of these extra forcing moves in this area and so the fight here is going well for black locally and the there, white has no ha chance to win the semi of this group against this group so everything depends on this co on the right um, and the good news for white in this case is that it's uh, black doesn't really have that many big co-threats like all of these moves in the fight in the center are big co-threats and this co is big enough that white can probably afford to give up uh, something in the area but it would be a trade white takes the co and if white connects here um, it's not going to be a hundred percent white's territory, but it's going to be a step co after that. So if white connects here, um, white's going to be, for the time being, fairly safe. So black plays a wedge, and this is also a test strategy. I was talking about the wedge on the other side. If black can play both of these wedges, uh, why don't we just take some time to go through that variation once more? Um, this is the way that black can fill a lot of white's liberties. At this point of the game, white might, might just sacrifice those stones. But um, for instance, this kind of thing. Just to make a story that's good for black. Um, and then this kind of, we can see white's liberties are really filling up. And eventually black would have to play here, but white only has four liberties left. And so uh, this group in the center is really very um, starving of liberties, running out of liberties and this wedge here that black played as a co-threat is actually part of that um, is part of the sequence that black will use to reduce white's liberties in the center so white answers it <coughs> and black takes the co and so this was a, an option for white to connect here but then black would pull back here and white would have only three liberties left which means that when black plays this and um, it would uh, add a bit of urgency to this call like why it's still it's still not like it's not a it's it's still a step call because white can leave it and it would still be an indirect call but it does seem to add a bit of urgency to the whole whole position and of course capturing this uh, at this scale would be pretty big so it would be a um, this would be a trade that maybe is feasible for black so white answered that and white played a honey so white is uh, now saying that white wants to go after these stones so if black finishes the coal black played one honey here 
So if black finishes the coal, that would be a move like this. Um, let's see, where will white play? White probably has to play something like this. Hmm. Maybe here. And if black goes after the one stone, actually this looks like it's um, feasible for black. Uh, so I might be missing something. In the actual game, black continued here. And white took the co. And so this is continuing to be a co fight here. And again, this group is not going to win in the semi against this group. So it's this co that counts. Um, and let's see, where does black have a co threat? Uh, black could use this one, it would be similar to the previous one. Maybe this is the biggest co threat now. Uh, black covered. Uh, now, this doesn't really make any difference, I don't think. Oh, maybe it does. Uh, white has to connect here. So this is actually a very good move. So that's why black felt, um, felt free to cover here, because black has this move. And um, white could connect here, which actually would make it an indirect co. Oh, but it did connect there. But black can take the co here. And when white captures the one stone, there's no way for white to kill this black group with just one move. Because white has to, white cannot connect here because of the lack of liberties on the upside. And so it has become a, an indirect co, which black can win by connecting here. But white cannot win by connecting here. So there's a slight advantage that black has in this co. That is locally is an advantage. Um, white, uh, in this case, white probably still has some co threats in the corner area, though. Uh, for instance, maybe the cut here, or pushing against black here. This kind of move would be a co threat that looks like white can use. In the center, white has to be careful um, because if white plays a slow co threat like this one, it would allow black to reduce white to four liberties. Um, so white would have to be worrying about what happens if black plays here, because um, this white group uh, for instance, if we have something like this happen, um, then black could use this strategy um, after playing this. Um, again, I've, I've shown this before, but black could use this sequence here to reduce white to reverse um, liberty short position. And this would just, everything would fill up so quickly that it's only four moves left. So black doesn't really need a lot of moves on the outside here. So this would be one way um, to show that white has to be really careful about how white uses these co threats here, because there is a potential that they will not be forcing. Uh, but white played the honey. When it's a honey, maybe it's good enough, because this is filling more liberties. So white played the honey here. Now, um, if, if white continues with even something like this, black would only have three outside liberties. So that semi that I was talking about is going to be bad for, for black. So black probably has to um, the first move that comes to mind would be the cut here. But of course that would continue the fight in the center. Otherwise black could um, play here. This would give white maybe only one more co-threat locally. But it, um, it's not as an effective move. It's not as effective as cutting here would be. So the stronger move would be to cut. Locally the stronger move is to be the cut. But you have to think of the co at the same time. And so all this time, this group on, in the lower left is sort of hanging, hanging in there. And um, it's stronger than the white group in the center, provided black can win the co. Black's going to kill just about everything here. Um, but if white can win the co, then everything comes to life. And black's group on the left is in trouble. And there's this uh, potential co that could happen with the corner here. So black did cut. So there's all these co's that are um, maybe or maybe not going to happen. 
and as I was saying before, black does have, um, with the wedge here, black does have some forcing moves in the area. So that's why the cut is such an effective move um, in the immediate area here. And this was looking like a very dangerous fight for black, but it's also, as we can see, it's very dangerous for white. Although, um, although white can win the fight by uh, winning the ko on the right, it's not a direct ko. So actually, if white takes here, white had to worry about black doing something like this and having, and then using the wedge here. Um, after capturing in the center, black could use this wedge to cut white off here. After, there's no room for white to push through anymore. So white, black would be able to use this sequence to capture most of the center after capturing these stones. And so that's why white, um, white actually ran, ran away here instead of taking the call. And black played an Atari. And white had to extend. So now uh, how does white, how does black handle this? This is the question. Um, the most natural move would be the hanging connection, but of course, if we're thinking of a potential fight to capture, a potential semi, oh, black already played this one. Uh, and we're thinking of a potential semi between this black group and the white group. And when that is going to happen, uh, we know that um, when black does connect, maybe black will want to play it this way. So black pushed through here, um, so we're, getting into this variation again. Let's just have black play all of the forcing moves. I think what black is trying to do is, black is trying to fill up the liberties in the center here, um, but is it going to be any good? So let's just try that out. Of course, black has only three liberties left. So at this point, there is the pu pushing move here, so black has to back off and white plays here. So it looks like it's maybe, maybe better not to play it, but if black does play it, white has one, two, three, four, five liberties left. Black, if white cuts, this is gonna be just three moves before black dies, so um, obviously black does need one more move in the center. And black has not played all of these moves. Um, I sort of question how many of them black will actually play, because um, this whole variation that I was showing here, it ended up leaving some bad aji in the center for black. So black did play, uh, the push through here and then um, played this move. And it, since black's going to connect here anyway, maybe black's going to play the Atari. Um, but no, black did not. Play. Black played the hanging connection. And as I was saying, this would have more liberties on the outside. This would already have five. And we can see these straight shapes like this tend to give more liberties. So this would be eight liberties on the outside. So if, we, uh, if white plays anything other than this, this already actually has seven liberties, which makes it very easy for black to capture, to win the race, to capture against white in the center. When black plays here, we can see that um, after we have a filled liberty here, for instance, then white can play this kind of squeeze. Uh, looks like white gets into trouble too, so it's, it, that m might be part of the reason. But white can play a squeeze here to reduce the number of liberties. So that's why usually the hanging connection is not good, but it is uh, putting more pressure on white on the left here, because now we're seeing yet one other white group that is in danger. So now there's the question of, um, I think that black group looks like it has at least four liberties. So this is a point where black could be playing something inside, like this one, but instead black pushed here. Um, and so in this case, if white extends or something, then black does have this forcing move. Um, either way, it, it threatens to capture with this. And, um, and then black can follow through with this um, and finally capture the white group. So this would be a very short semi. It would be very um, quickly killed uh, white group because white only has two liberties. So we can see that any move in this vicinity is going to be forcing, which means that this move is actually threatening to capture the five stones next. And so if white escapes with the five stones, black can capture the two stones. 
So locally already, black has settled that problem. And white took the ko. And black played a honey here, threatening white on the left side. And now white has gone after the black group here. So this is still a ko. Now it's a direct ko. So it's white's turn to find a ko threat. And so now, um, in this variation, we're seeing um, maybe white's going to win the ko, in which case this whole corner, <coughs> the whole, whole corner would become a white territory. Uh, this, this is big. And then we're seeing a lot of black territory developing on the left side of the board too, and in the center. And so it's going to be a big trade. Uh, but white still has to, has, needs one more, it's the final ko here, so white still needs to win the ko before we can um, say for sure what's going to happen. And at this point, black doesn't have the option of connecting the ko because white would just win the semi -ida. So um, locally, black's best move is to play here and reduce white's liberties, and then white will take the ko. Um, if black connects the ko now, white will only have two liberties and black will win by one move. So this is a, a direct ko. But black first plays here. White plays here. And black's idea here is um, to cut here, I suppose, or maybe use this as a co threat. Oh, black extended here. So that finishes off the left side. So, uh, so everything changes so much in this game. Um, now this white group is dead. And if we think of a semi between this white group and this black group, Black has a lot of extra liberties here, so I think black's going to win. But actually, um, if white gets to play this point, it, it could still be an interesting semi. -i. So I think black has a slight advantage in that semi, -i, but it's, it's not decisive. And there's these stones in the center, which are in danger if black plays here. So black can capture those stones in the center. Still, they don't have anything to do with the black group here. Um, and there's this potential ko in the corner if black plays something like this. And let's see, uh, black played this ko threat. White took the w one stone. Um, if black takes the ko, I wouldn't be surprised if white goes after these. Uh, this stone is not on the board, excuse me. If white goes after these stones. Because th this is a very important capture here. But instead, black pulls out here. Now, this is. Um, Contrary to my expectations, uh, because white still has four liberties here, and white can capture these two stones. Uh, wow, this is really exciting, but looks dangerous for black. Um, white, uh, now there's, if black loses this group, there's the potential that this black group could turn into a semi with this white group, which is not alive yet, if black plays on Tari here. But, um, for the time being, it looks like white has more liberties. White did, black did play the tari here. Now if white leaves that, then black can um, play here, and then play here, and squeeze this way. And there's going to be a ko, but let's say white eventually connects like this. And we can see, um, not only is it saving these stones, but uh, white's um, in, in terrible Dames Mari. So this would be a collapse for white. And this is actually, we can see that since it's connected to these stones, it is a, um, a key, key point there. So maybe white's going to connect, white connected. Black uh, took the ko, and white extended here. So now this is getting sort of almost dizzying. White um, is not alive yet in the center here. White has one eye. But for the time being, these black stones are probably weaker than the white group. So white seems to be okay here for the time being. Uh, there's still this ko, which is if black plays another move, for instance here, this is going to be a direct ko. Uh, but it's a direct ko, but um, black doesn't really have any ko threats for it, does black? Unless black? Maybe black can use this one. Maybe black uses ko threats against the center. So this could happen, I guess. So white is just taking the coal. Yes. And black played an attachment. 
So black does have some co-threats against white in the center here. Like if black plays here, uh, white will have um, maybe four or five liberties. It would be fairly, um, uh, uh, there would be a lack of liberties. Especially if we assume that white's going to answer this move, it would, uh, white would easily lose. But even if you don't assume that, if you have black play something like this, um, then it would be a fight against, from the, with these stones in this group. And it looks like, um, let's see, it's one, two, three. Black does lose by one move. Um, but, so this is a potential trade. But white answered it. And black took a call. And white played here. So now white's using the group that was killed by black's co-threat uh, to make a co-threat. And when white does play here, uh, now everything has changed in the center and it's all fixed for white. So if white cuts here, black's going to have a very, uh, a very limited number of liberties. And this white group is connected up. So this is not really an option for black. Black has to connect. So this is a direct co. Actually, it's a, a, a co that has white has an advantage. In. Uh, the left side is probably going to be black's territory, but that's the only big black territory that's going to be left if black loses this co. And the corner here is in danger, but it's it's not so big either. So black does need to play co-threats in the center. This is it's the same co-threat as the one that black played before. So. Uh, if white is answered once, I expect white to answer another time. Um, and black takes the co, I suppose, yes. So we've come this far. Uh, white, um, so I was saying that black has just this territory and, well, some other small territories, but not really that much to speak of. If white can win the co, then this whole corner is going to be white's territory, so it's going to be huge. And, of course, white has some more territory on the upper side. So in that case, it doesn't really matter uh, what happens to the lower left corner, because um, that's going to be a co, but um, it's not so easy. It, white has local co-threats and stuff like that. So white cuts here. Black needs to answer that one. And white takes the co. And so it's looking, um, now it has become difficult for black. Black is running out of co-threats in the center. Uh, black does have uh, one co-threat here, but white still has some co-threats on the left side. The way white's playing the co-threats, that's going, going sort of making the semi, the potential semi here is probably getting easier for black um, when you compare it to white playing a move like this. But uh, it's just making a lot of co-threats so that white can win the co. So black has just taken the co. Uh, black used this co-threat. And so now white needs to find, oh, I'm sorry. Black has played this move. So it's a direct co. Uh, white needs to find a co-threat. But white does have uh, co-threats in the left side. So there, Oh yes, white used this one. And so black will have to answer. Um, if white captures the two stones here, that's just a living shape. So black will be dying well, even the corner is in danger. It's, it could be a co, uh, but still. And, and the side group here is going to die. So black can, can't afford to do that. If black answers locally, then white can take the co. And fairly soon, um, it seems apparent that black is running out of co threats. So the game position is like this. actually looks like they've finished. So I think black must have resigned at this point. Um, and so it's a win for the Chinese peer, uh, Koche and uh, Yu. I can't really pronounce her name, but it's uh, Yu in English, I believe. So it's Yu, Yu or Yu. So in this game, um, it started with this big moyo on the right. And then uh, black's group in the lower left got into trouble. And it turned into this big uh, fight to capture a semi in the center of the board, which uh, spread to the right side, and all these codes, the code that didn't happen in the lower left corner and the code that did happen in, on the right side. 
And the event, if they had gone on playing, they would have eventually gotten a ko in the lower left corner too. And this semi on the left, and stones dying and living and coming back to life. So it was really exciting, I think. So I'm going to finish here. Thank you.